In this video, I'll show you everything you need to know about Xcode if you are a cross-platform app developer that uses either React Native or Flutter. So, let's get to it. Alright, so what I've done here is that I have made the sample Flutter application into a native Mac desktop app here by enabling the macOS desktop Flutter feature. Now you can do that by going to your terminal and typing in the Flutter enable command to enable that feature and once you have enabled that feature and you create a new desktop app there will be a macOS folder inside the folder inside the root folder of that project that will contain a standard Xcode project file dot Xcode proj. And what I've done is that I've opened that Xcode proj here into Xcode and it looks like just any other Xcode project. And first of all, a little tour of Xcode. Here on the left, you have the left pane, which can be customized to display a lot of things by default. And my personal recommendation is that you keep it on the file view so you can easily browse your file tree as necessary. And then over here, there's the editor. So if I pick a code file, this is where I would do the actual editing of that code file. And then over here, there's the right pane, which is just the inspector view. So it has some inspection functions. And then on the top, there's the header. And here is the status bar. So the last action that I performed was to clean the build folder. So it shows that that was completed successfully. If you have any errors or warnings, it'll show it there. And then here, there's the run button. And this is very important. But before we dive into the run button a little bit, next to the run button is the type of the build scheme configurate picker. So here, I can pick the active scheme as you as it says when you hover over it pick the active scheme I can pick the active scheme to build and or run and or profile or test the app with and this is not the run type scheme this is rather the scheme of the app that I want to build with so here there are t it lists two schemes and in the case of this flutter the runner one is the one that we want and now let's dive into that run button. So when you hit the run button, it will build the application with the debug configuration. And when it's done building, it'll launch the application. And the reason for that is, is because in the build type configuration scheme section, which is over here. So under product scheme, edit scheme, you can get the scheme window over here. And there are multiple types of schemes, as you can see. There's the building scheme, which has two targets, pre-actions, build, and post-actions. Then there's the run. And here is where it picks that. Info, the build configuration is set to debug. If I were to set this to release, it would build it with the release configuration. But for running, since you're running and debugging the app, it's best to keep it to debug. I can set more arguments, options, diagnostics in the configuration. Now here's another example of configuration, the testing configuration. In the testing configuration, you want to always keep it on debug because you're testing the app and you're debugging the app. In the profile configuration, however, you want it to be on release. You want to build the release production version of your app before you profile it so you, th so you know that this is what your users are going to see. Same thing, in the analyze, when you're analyzing it, for whatever reason, you want to see the debug configuration or the release configuration. This depends on what you're trying to accomplish. For now, we'll leave it on debug. And the final stage of the development process, archive, is when you build your archive to either submit your final app to the App Store or offer it as a standard download. In the case of macOS on iOS, that is obviously not possible. But on this one, you obviously want to keep it to release because you want your users to get the final production app. So now, I close that and hit the run button. I will hit the run button. It will build the app with the debug configuration. And as I said before, this is just the sample Flutter application. And since it's going to take quite a few seconds to build, I'm going to skip through this.
and as you can see the build has succeeded which means that it should be launching our app which it should start in a minute and it should start launching our app in a second here and yes it has launched our app it looks like because the screen went off the focus let me see and it doesn't seem to be launching it automatically for us and this is actually a very good point because this might happen to you well okay now it's launching it but in case it doesn't launch it for you automatically I'll show you how you can get that app file that it built so to get that app file that it built you want to go to your finder and then you want to make sure that you show hidden folders so to do that hold down command shift and the dot and then you want to go to library developer xcode derive data and then you want to find the name of the one you might have two folders here and then in that case what you can do you can view which one was created latest in my case since I want the latest version and it says created October 10 650 okay so this is the one that I need the one that has the D as the first letter with the random letters so I'm gonna go there and then once you're in there build products debug and here is your dot app file now luckily it launched it for us but otherwise you can just open it just like any other Mac app and over here as you can see this is the sample flutter app that has been built via Xcode now for those of you guys that are wondering what we did is equivalent to running the command flutter run dash D Mac OS from the terminal and as you can see this is just a simple standard demo app I'm hitting the button and it's upping the count and it is the debug configuration as you see here alright so now we're done with this I'm gonna quit that we're gonna come back over here to Xcode and alright we have built the app in that configuration now let's just say okay I've made some changes obviously you would make those changes in Dart you would reopen the Xcode project and I'm done making those changes now I want to build the app not the archive I just want to build it now you're wondering okay there's a run button here there's no build button here so how do I build it well for that you got to go to the product menu then here are all the buttons so this run is the same as that and then these are all the buttons that map to all those other options that came up here these map exactly so now let's just say I want to do a generic build and in this case we need to see the scheme of the build so we get an idea of what's gonna happen in the build in the build it's going to build it's gonna analyze test run and profile and archive so this is gonna kinda of do everything we're going to come to the product then we're going to hit build for testing and in this case it should build a app and we'll be back when it's done building here just wait a little bit it will take quite some time and the build has succeeded and again it will take some time to launch the application um, it should be done any minute now launching the application and again if it doesn't you can just make a new finder window go to library developer xcode derive data your folder build products debug and it will overwrite the existing configuration and that's exactly what we wanted and it made the app but with testing functionality and that allows us to run whatever test you want I'm not gonna go into those details because that's beyond the scope of this video the scope of this video is just the basics so okay now that you've tested it now we want to build the production version the version that you would put on the App Store to do that in Xcode just go product archive we need to archive it hit archive and it will take some time to archive it'll build the release version and once it's done and the build has succeeded and we know that because it is running my app 
and over here as you can see it just made my app open and that's great this is our production version of the app so now you've made the archive and for some reason it still built the debug version and this might happen to you so if it does happen to you you can come to Xcode and you can try archiving it again and see if it does work this time which it should work and and when the archive is done building successfully this new window will pop up that has a list of your macOS apps on one side all your archives and options that you can do with them now if you have other apps associated with your system like iOS apps you will also get those here and here we have our final production archive and what we can do with this is we can do something with this archive so we can hit distribute app now this will not send it to the app store right away I was a little bit concerned when I hit that the first time that it would send it to the app store it doesn't that's a bit misleading of a name so but you can click that and this comes up and here you can pick to distribute it on the App Store with App Store Connect. You can distribute it directly to customers. You can distribute it directly to members of your team and or copy the archive of the app. Export a copy of the archived app. In this case, since it's a Mac app and I'm going to give you an example, you can we're going to hit distribute directly to customers, hit enter. And here, now this is very important here. If you are a paying Apple developer account customer, what you can do is you can upload this to Apple for notary service. Now do keep in mind that in order to send it to Apple for notary service you will need to enable hardened runtime from the signing and capabilities section of Xcode. And what you can do when you go to the signing and capabilities section you can hit the plus button that'll be right about here and you can hit hardened runtime in the menu that pops up and then hit OK and then it will let you upload this to Apple for notary service. And if you're wondering what notary service is, that is Apple's fancy term of them checking your app for viruses. So if you have noticed, sometimes when you open an application from the internet that you've downloaded from macOS, it'll say, this app is from the internet. Would you like to open the app? Apple has checked the app and verified that there is no malicious software. That is the notary portion and you get a certificate staple now I am NOT a paying Apple customer for the developer account so I'm gonna hit export and I can just sign and export without notarizing and I it's gonna ask me to pick a development team um, I'm not gonna bother signing in to my account right now so I'm gonna show you a little bit of a cool little sort of unofficial way to get that dot app file without going through this kind of process so I'm just gonna right click on this hit show in finder and then once it pops up in finder I'm just gonna right click on the archive hit show package content products applications and here is our production app and just to show you if I copy this application right click and then copy and I accidentally double clicked on it so no if I right click copy on that I can and if I let's just say for example I dump it in my applications folder outside of that archive folder it will work and I can just double click on this app easily just like any other Mac OS app I can double click on it like this and it's just the same app that you've seen I can click this it'll go zoom zoom and as you can see there's no debug banner this time and depending on how your system is configured with user accounts it might even show up in the launch pad here since you moved it to the application folder so if I type in my app 2 here we go right here in the launch pad so if I quit it out of here and if I go back to the launch pad and type in my app 2 which is what I named the app by the way it will launch the application just normally just like any other app Chrome PowerPoint Excel any of those it'll launch it 
and I can use this app just normally. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe and enable notifications so you don't miss any future programming content and I'll see you in the next video.